Here's the very latest on the deadly shooting at Camp Liberty. Multinational Corps Iraq on Tuesday released the name of the alleged shooter. Officials say Sergeant John M. Russell killed five people Monday afternoon. Sergeant Russell is assigned to the headquarters of the 54th Engineer Battalion at Bomberg, Germany. Petty Officer Steve Smith reports from Baghdad. Senior military officials met with press to address the shooting of five U.S. service members at Camp Liberty in Baghdad. The service members killed are one Navy officer, one Army officer, and three Army soldiers. The suspect is Sergeant John M. Russell of Headquarters, 54th Engineering Battalion, Bomberg, Germany. The ongoing investigation will look into the criminal acts and mental health procedures in Iraq. The commander of the suspect, uh, that being Sergeant Russell, uh, had taken his weapon away. Uh, he had uh, experienced uh, or, or had been referred to counseling uh, approximately the week beforehand. Uh, and through that process, his commander had determined that it would be best for him not to have a weapon. The suspect was apprehended outside the clinic shortly after shots were heard. I'm Petty Officer Steve Smith, Baghdad. Now, more support for soldiers and their families is a key goal in the Army budget for 2010. That's the message to lawmakers on Capitol Hill from Army Secretary Pete Guerin. Secretary Guerin and Chief of Staff General George Casey briefed members of the Senate Armed Services Panel Tuesday on budget priorities for 2010. Of the Army's budget proposal, more than $140 billion, Secretary Guerin said $1.7 billion will fund family programs. He says the Army is also looking beyond the next budget cycle at support for families of deployed soldiers. The investments that we're making are going to, to help better support families. Uh, long term, I think the most important thing we can do is, is increase the dwell time, uh, move it beyond the currently one to about 1.3 that it is today, and, and get to the R4Gen model of one year deployed to two uh, at home, ultimate goal three at home. Secretary Guerin says the long-term goal is to meet force requirements and ensure that soldiers have adequate time with their families. Well, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates announced Tuesday that he has nominated Navy Admiral James G. Stavridis for reappointment to the rank of Admiral, with assignment as Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. Admiral Stavridis is currently serving as Commander of U.S. Southern Command. Uh, he will also take on the role as Commander of U.S. European Command with the appointment. Citing strong recruiting numbers across the services, defense officials say recruiting dollars are going to go down. The DOD budget for 2010 calls for a cut of more than 10 percent in funding to recruit and retain the force. Petty Officer Christina Moore has more details on the reasons for those cuts from our Pentagon Bureau. The latest DOD figures show all services, including reserve components, either meeting or exceeding the recruitment goals for April. Top DOD officials see the latest numbers as a sign of recent success, brought on in part by several years of increased spending for recruitment and retention. And they say cuts will come across a range of recruitment and retention activity. Uh, bonuses are clearly one area in which the services will take a hard look at and are subject to cuts. But they'll also look at the amount of money spent on advertising. They'll also look at the number of production recruiters uh, that they assign across the country. So in those three areas, I think that you'll see some significant adjustments. Robust recruiting numbers are also a sign of the economic times, and administration officials see the weak economy and dismal job market as an ongoing factor. So we expect unemployment to continue to increase for some time yet, albeit not at the rates we've seen most recently. It does affect recruiting in that when unemployment rises, jobs become scarce in the civilian sector. Overall, the 2010 budget calls for $800 million less in spending for recruitment and retention. Those cuts would come as the new budget calls for more funds to back the ongoing growth of ground forces. The military still needs about 180,000 young men and women each year for the active duty force and another 140,000 for the reserve components. Military officials say the demand for ground forces will remain high as commitments in Iraq and Afghanistan continue. From the Pentagon, I'm Petty Officer Christina Moore. Well, there's new information from the Navy on the number of sailors afflicted with the H1N1 virus. Navy officials now say that there are 23 confirmed cases of the virus. The Navy says it's taking precautions to assure more sailors don't get infected. 
The Centers for Disease Control designated the, designated the Naval Health Research Center as an H1N1 confirmatory lab earlier this month. Now, for more information about the virus and what you can do to protect yourself, just log on to www.cdc.gov. Well, it's been eight years in the making, but Monday the Navy took delivery of its newest aircraft carrier, the USS George H.W. Bush. What you're seeing here is footage from the ship's commissioning ceremony in January. The carrier is the Navy's 10th and final Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. That's the most advanced in its class. It boasts a new vacuum marine sanitation system and other control systems that will reduce costs over its life cycle. And para pararescue men with the Air National Guard's 106th Rescue Squadron marked their 100th standby shuttle mission. During the launch, their job is to wait for the worst to happen. Happily, the crew on the Atlantis reached orbit safely. Well, coming up next here on Around the Services, endurance and stress. That's quite a combination for a group of Rangers fighting to be the best. Stay tuned to see who got top honors. But first, it's a moo of a mission. See how military doctors are providing medical care to some very special patients.